Hello everyone. Um, nice to meet you again at a new episode of the <clears throat> Behind, Beyond the Cancer Diagnosis interview series. Today our guest is uh, Dr. Lam, the president of International Psycho-Oncological Society. Dr. Lam, thank you for accepting our invitation and welcome to our interview series. Thank you, um, Adrian, and thank you for inviting me to um, uh, join the uh, have the interview. So it is my very uh, my great pleasure to be able to uh, take part in this. Thank you. For sure, it will be an interesting uh, discussion uh, because um, we are trying uh, to cover all over the world and uh, maybe IPOS in some parts of our. Uh, globe, it's not so well known. Therefore, uh, I will ask you as a first question to make a brief presentation of what IPOS is uh, in terms of history, uh, beliefs, values, and future plans. Sure. Um, so um, IPOS was established in um, 1984 by Dr. Jimmy Holland um, to promote global multidisciplinary collaboration in the field of psychology. So this year is our 40th anniversary uh, anniversary of the IPOS. So um, for IPOS, um, it's basically the main purpose is to serve as a platform for clinicians um, educators and researchers from various disciplines to come together and exchange knowledge, insight, and advancement in the field of psychology. By fostering international communication, IPOS facilitates the dissemination of clinical practice, educational resources, and research findings that contribute to the well being of patients with cancer and their families. And one of our main goals of uh, is to enhance the support provided to patients with cancer and their families throughout the cancer journey, from the moment of diagnosis through the treatment phase and into survivorship and palliative care. By addressing the psychosocial impact of cancer, IPOS seeks to improve the quality of patients and to promote quality of life of patients and to promote their overall well-being. In order to achieve these objectives, IPOS emphasized the importance of a multidisciplinary approach, um, psychiatry, psychology, social work, nursing, and palliative medicines are predominantly disciplined in the field of psychology. By collaborating across these disciplines, professionals can provide comprehensive care that address the psychological, emotional, and social needs of cancer patients and their family. Uh, thank you for uh, your brief uh, introduction. So, as I, uh, as far as I, uh, I, I, I think uh, we are talking about psych oncology officially like forty years. Yes. It's almost half of a century. For some, it's uh, it's quite a big number. For some, quite not. Uh, even though. Um, uh, psycho oncology in the within psychology it's a new it's a new notion and uh, there are many definitions of what psycho oncology is yeah. or means or intend to be even though uh, the foundation of each definition it's quite the same but uh, i want to ask you uh, this time as a researcher not on yeah. official position of uh, IPOS president, uh, what uh, can you define, uh, so, or how can you define psycho oncology in terms for every patient to understand uh, this uh, this uh, word? Sure. Um, so, for my, um, from my perspective, psychology is really a subspecialty of oncology in which we focus on addressing the emotional responses of patients, the family, and caregivers at all stages of the disease. And also, in this particular subspecialty, we recognize the psychosocial aspect of cancer and identify the psychological, social, and behavioral factors that may impact cancer 
cancer morbidity and mortality. And in the field, um, we integrate psychological support and intervention to improve the overall well-being and treatment outcomes of cancer patients. So that's how I uh, conceptualize, uh, so to speak, uh, the, in terms of what the psycho-oncology is about. Uh, very, very interesting uh, definition because uh, uh, you said that uh, it's quite a division of oncology. Uh, many people and uh, researchers think that it's a subdivision of psychology. For example, in Eastern Europe, uh, we are we were taught that uh, psycho-oncology is something within uh, uh, psychology. Now, in the Western part, to put it uh, this mm. way, is treated as a part of oncology. So this is this is very interesting, and also it's very interesting that um, I notice also on the IPOS website and <clears throat> on the events that um, sometimes uh, specialist refers to psychosocial oncology, mm. Mm. and it seems to me that are two terms that sometimes. Uh, is they are using uh, incorrectly or apply incorrectly because psychologists this time may not understand exactly what is psychology, what is psychosocial uh, oncology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, could you point out the main differences if there are between these two terms? Sure. Um, so it's from. From my perspective, I see that um, psycho-oncology typically refer to the psychological aspect of cancer, specifically focusing on the emotional and mental well-being of the patients with cancer. And it often involves the assessment and treatment of psychological distress, such as anxiety, depression, and adjustment issues that can arise from cancer diagnosis. Um, and also psychology may involve um, looking at individuals counseling, um, using uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and other psychological intervention to help patients cope with emotional challenges associated with cancer. On the other hand, um, if you separate psychology with the psychosocial oncology, I would say psychosocial oncology encompasses a broader perspective as it addresses not only the psychological aspect, but also the social aspects of um, cancer. And psychosocial oncology recognize that um, cancer impacts not only the individuals with the diagnosis, but also the family, friends, and also a broader social network, and even the impact on society as well. It's considered the social support system, communications dynamics, and societal factors that may influence the well-being of the cancer patients and the loved ones. So um, I guess psychosocial oncology may involve also involve um, support groups, family therapies, intervention to address um, social challenges such as uh, financial concern, relational uh, relationship issues, and caregivers' uh, burden. So overall, um, I think the terms, the two terms are often used um, interchangeably, um, where Psychosocial oncology can be seen as a more comprehensive approach that includes both the psychological and social aspect of cancer, why, uh, whereas psycho-oncology primarily focuses more on the psychological well-being of patients with cancer. But as I mentioned earlier on, in terms of the role or the goal of psycho on IPOS, I think you know we actually cover much broader perspective rather than just looking at the psychological aspect. So that's, to me, that's the difference between the two. But uh, it's like you said, I think uh, there's a lot of overlapping uh, between the two uh, definitions, you know. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. You, you said within IPOS, uh, you, you try to cover uh, also the social aspect mm. of the patient and which is very important because statistics said that uh, family support for example is half of recovering so yeah. uh, this this is very very important uh, and uh, this is uh, i guess a part of ipos um, community which is divided in working groups mm. uh, and here uh, uh, i will uh, ask you to develop this concept of special interest groups 
I saw on the iPost website, so you mm. have different uh, SIG that covers the main aspect of the mm. oncological uh, patient from yeah. psych- oncological uh, point of view. Yeah. Sure. Um, so um, special interest group in um, psychology or in IPOS, uh, we refer to groups of professional researchers and advocates um, dedicated uh, to advancing the understanding and treatment of psychological and social issues related to cancer. And this group focus on specific areas such as um, pediatric oncology, uh, cancer survivorship, uh, palliative care, fee of cancer recurrence, um, geriatric oncology, e-health intervention, and and also we have a special interest group focused on uh, um, psycho-oncology work within uh, LMIC countries. So they provide a platform for members to collaborate and share knowledge and also to develop strategy to improve the quality of life of cancer patients and their families. We also advocate uh, policies that support patients with cancer and promote access to quality care. So um, as you probably see in on our website, we now have nine uh, special interest groups uh, to cover a variety of topics. Uh, that uh, it's uh, quite uh, quite good, uh, and uh, as far as I know, it will be the tenth of early um, career professional in psych oncology, mm. uh, yes. which I'm also part of the of the board, and uh, we are eager to to develop because. Oh, great. Uh, we we believe that uh, we have to share our um, our our knowledge and uh, therefore i will ask you uh, if the next statement is true or false because uh, many of outsiders said that ipos it's mainly a research and academic based community not right. not such a practical let's say uh, right. community is true right. or false? Um, I would say it's false because as I mentioned earlier on um, IPOS offer a platform uh, for clinicians, educators and not only just researchers from various disciplines and to come together and exchange knowledge, insights and advancements in the field. Hence, um, we are not just members of the research and academic community. Like for instance, um, in our annual World Congress, uh, we fostered international communication and facilitated the dissemination of clinical practice education resources in addition to research finding that contribute to the well-being of cancer patients and their family. And as you know, we will be hosting the uh, the 25th of World Congress uh, in uh, Maastricht uh, this year. And uh, uh, about the Congress, anniversary Congress, uh, what uh, do you think it will be the uh, uh, the outcome of this anniversary uh, Congress? Uh, sorry, say again. Uh, the the outcome. What do you think? It's an anniversary Congress. Uh, should be something and a special event. And uh, uh, with many researchers, I guess, is the Congress with the most number of participants so far. Right. So, um, um, uh, regarding this year Congress, as well as the previous Congress, mm. <clears throat> which is the, the sequels or the outcomes of each Congress? Mm. Because I, I saw that there is a book of abstracts which mm. is free for audience, but uh, this Congress came with something, let's say, that uh, uh, researchers can use in practice. Mm. Yes. Um, so what we're trying to do, uh, I hope I understand the, your questions. Uh, in terms of the Congress, um, yes, uh, you will see a lot of participants um, they are research focused and they come and share their work uh, with uh, others in terms of you know the research work. And I think partly is because this is uh, like an academic, more like an academic culture that uh, is part of your jobs that you will have to go and 
disseminate your research findings. But uh, in terms of the World Congress, we also encourage uh, very much uh, having clinicians to come and take part because um, research findings, uh, it, it's not going to help to advance uh, the field unless clinicians are able to apply uh, the research evidence to in clinical practice. So, so from IPOS perspective, uh, the research and the clinical practice, they come hands in hands. So um, you can't just ignore uh, the clinical practice side, but obviously what we are advocate is practice should be evidence-based, which means uh, we needs the research evidence to guide uh, us to improve clinical practice and also to establish clinical guidelines. Um, so that's how I see uh, what's the main goals of the Congress is to really try to bring everyone together uh, in order to um, enhance uh, the, uh, the service provision for our cancer patients. That, that was uh, the questions and thank you very much for, for your explanation. And in addition with this uh, this question and discussion, um, more and more um, uh, researchers from different countries joins uh, IPOS and uh, we notice, let's say people from Iran or uh, I, I don't know which other country, then uh, they are the first members of IPOS from their countries. Mm. Uh, and also a significant part of, um, let's say, all members. Um, they are not, uh, let's say, um, complaining, but they it seems they need that part of training also, or mm. executive education, because I'm coming from Eastern Europe and in Eastern Europe, when you join an international society or uh, your, your first thought is uh, where should I do an executive education mm. to have my, my knowledge, you know, proved by a diploma. This is mm. our mentality. Mm. And uh, I want to ask you if in the future IPOS is planning to uh, do at least online. Mm. Uh, except the webinars, but an executive education, maybe on foundation of psych oncology, mm. or in order to give a diploma mm. to the future participants. Right, yes. Um, I, I think this is a great question because uh, we do have a plan. Um, and But just what I want to bring back to what we have done so far in IPOS is that uh, we had actually developed uh, uh, guidelines for uh, psychology curriculum uh, uh, aimed at enhancing and standardizing education and training. Um, so I think uh, you're probably also aware of our curriculum as well. And so we currently, uh, currently we have uh, 13 modules cover various domains, and it also has been translated into 10 languages. Um, so that's what we are currently have uh, in terms of uh, curriculum uh, uh, content. Uh, but we, but we, you are correct. We don't have a training program, uh, except uh, the training program for the L LMIC countries, which I will touch on a little bit uh, at just a moment. Um, but uh, what we are trying to do at the moment um, is to actually establish a task force for developing core competency in psych oncology because we have the curriculum, but we actually don't have the core competency to define what are the essential skills in order to practice, you know, for uh, people to practice in psych oncology, which will ultimately, so if we have the competency, which ultimately will help us to guide us to actually um, develop uh, the training program based on the core competency. So that's where we are at the moment. So I'm leading a, a task force um, currently working on that. Um, as I mentioned just now, uh, IPOS also devote a lot of time and effort to uh, for capacity building in, psycho in psycho-oncology, especially with um, uh, low middle income countries. For instance, um, 
uh, in recent years, we have conducted a series of training in Pan uh, Pan um, Africa for capacity building. Um, and we work with local representative and offer support for capacity building by offering uh, training, uh, which is applicable uh, for the local uh, practitioner uh, to uh, apply uh, in their local setting. Because um, IPOS uh, highlight the importance of um, engaging uh, the local representative or champions because uh, it is very important to making sure that, uh, uh, you know, the skills that they learn uh, or they equip are actually applicable uh, to the countries uh, because that's very important. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for your interesting uh, descriptions and interest also in this part of uh, executive education, which is so necessary in this, in this field. Yes. <clears throat> um, uh, IPOS, um, it's uh, also a community that it's part of, uh, let's call big family of global public health services. Mm. And, uh, in, uh, in this context, I will want to ask you about uh, uh, the relations with other institutions, in, international institutions dealing with cancer, such as uh, European Cancer Organizations or even uh, World Health Organization, mm. Canadian Association of Psych Oncology. How, uh, how you work together or how, how are the things going? Right. Um, in recent years, uh, IPOS actually, yes, you're correct that uh, IPOS has established partnerships with other international and also regional organizations as well. So for instance, uh, in 2014, um, IPOS had an official partnership with WHO. Um, so, and we now regularly have meeting, uh, like uh, online meeting with the WHO representative to talk about um, how we can uh, further uh, um, enhance uh, psych oncology services uh, with the also um, uh, in line with the WHO uh, missions as well. Uh, we also have formal partnership uh, with the UICC um, Global Cancer Control and obviously uh, also European uh, Cancer Organization as well. Um, so we we also partner uh, with them, and also we have an active collaboration with other oncology societies as well. For example, like Mars, the uh, multinational um, uh, association of supportive care uh, in cancer, and also the European Society for Gynecological Oncology. So just named a few that we have partnership with them, and these partnerships are actually very important uh, for us because it helps to promote our standard of quality cancer care, which is uh, the psychosocial cancer care must be integrated into routine care. And in addition to that, um, in September 2007, uh, IPOS Board of Directors and also the participant at the National Society meeting, uh, which we held uh, during the World Congress uh, uh, annually, and agree at the time in 2007, we agreed to establish the IPOS Federation of Psychology Society. So we have federation members who comprise um, national and re or regional psychology society society. And the aims of the IPOS Federation is to advocate um, for psycho-oncology globally by delivering a consistent message that emphasizes the importance of providing comprehensive psychosocial support to patients with cancer and the family at every stage of disease and also survivorship. And uh, currently, uh, we actually have 33 societies in total that are under the IPOS uh, Federation. Uh, thank you. Uh, we are uh, not have much time, so I will ask you like um, the last questions. Uh, <clears throat> starting from what you mentioned earlier, routine care, cancer care, 
I had a very interesting discussion recently with uh, a representative of Harvard Medical School Executive Education mm. uh, who argued that artificial intelligence mm. uh, today is not a luxury but a necessity. Mm. Uh, you talk about uh, routine care in cancer care. Uh, how do you think artificial intelligence will uh, influence this routine care in uh, regarding psych oncology? Right. Um, I think um, with the global challenge of manpower short shortage in the healthcare system, um, AI certainly um, has the potential to improve the care and outcomes of cancer patients, um, especially by you know by providing personalized treatment plans, um, early detection, um, even psychological support and symptom monitoring and predictive analytics, for instance. Um, so uh, if you look at the literature, you will notice that um, recent studies have used, uh, for example, machine learning to identify uh, risk factors or you know, develop trying to develop risk model to predict uh, uh, who, will more, who will be more likely to experience persistent or chronic psychological distress in response to cancer diagnosis. Um, so those informations will be very helpful in terms of uh, 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 developing um, screening program and also um, early uh, prevention intervention as well. And on the other hand, there's also study have tested the effects of using chatbot, chatbot or virtual assistant to provide emotional support for cancer patients. Um, so these are some of the uh, uh, ongoing or more recent study that you have, uh, you will probably come across uh, in the in research area. And of course, in IPOS, um, one of our uh, special interest group is looking also looking into the application of AI in the field as well. So um, we have a thing special interest group in focus on e intervention. So this year, we actually expanded to also cover the AI side as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, Dr. Lam, for uh, being with us today. Uh, and uh, hopefully, we'll see each other uh, soon, maybe yes. with the <laughs> news. Uh, Maybe we'll do another interview after the Mastery Conference. I think yeah. it, will be, it will be interesting sure. the anniversary uh, conference. Yes, uh, yes. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Good luck on uh, your activity. Thank you.